Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with jazz drummer and composer Chess Smith and percussionist Daniel Breville. They opened up about their new project, We All Break, that melds elements of Haitian voodoo and contemporary jazz on a groundbreaking new path of seven colors. The recording and the film showcase the band's synergistic connection and exhilarating mix of music, forms, and energy. Enjoy the interview. Cool. Well, hey, thank you, gentlemen, for taking a minute out. Where are we all respectively in the world right now? Yeah, sure. So you're you're Chess, you're in Austria, and uh, who who joined the call? I just this is Danielle Breville. I'm in Virginia. Okay, Virginia. Cool, cool. All right. So uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for taking a minute out for Neon Jazz. I appreciate it. Glad to be so, here. So I guess the big thing right now that's going on, obviously, is this pandemic, and you have a new album that's coming out. And I want to know from you, give me an idea of your feelings on this coming out. You're obviously just at a festival in Austria now. Things have been kind of opening up here in the States. Talk to me a little bit about the uh, possibility of actually delivering this music live. We have things on the books. Yeah, I thought, you know, if you would have asked me this, like, Two three weeks ago, I would I would have been very optimistic. Um, now you know with the Delta variant, I'm I'm seeing some things start to cancel and things like that. But you know, not everything. Um, like like this festival here is happening, no problem. And I have a feeling stuff in New York's going to go on as planned. And yeah, I just hope nothing gets postponed again. But you know, we're playing October 26th at Roulette in New York, as you know, as a kind of a, a belated record release show. And then we have, you know, things in France and, you know, Tennessee and then other other tentative bookings also next year, like 2022. Stuff got moved back to then, basically. Talk to me a little bit about the artistic construction of this album. Talk to me a little bit about how all of this came together and how you feel about the final product. The instrumental parts I wrote for, um, you know, the, basically the bass, piano, and saxophone parts for um, the traditional rhythms of Haitian Vodou. And, um, you know, sort of distributed ideas that are already in the music around the ensemble and, you know, and created, um, you know, pitch, content, stuff like that, melodies, rhythms, and um, harmonies, things like that. It was all basically designed to work with a um, more or less traditional voodoo ensemble of, um, you know, where the, where the lead drummer is calling things. And that's, that's mostly Danielle and sometimes Fafan, the other, um, another drummer in the group. Um, so when they initiate calls, the whole ensemble is supposed to react to that like like they would in the traditional music, like like the drummers would and things like that. Another component is um, a very important one is the the songs, um, the 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 traditional um, songs that that come from Haiti that Danielle um, has always been in charge of bringing in, and and Danielle wrote you know, many um, new original ones for this record, this 2020 record with, for the eight-piece band. And um, maybe Danielle could talk a little bit about that, about, you know, coming up with that material. Especially when I got the call from Chess um, regarding the 2020 album, my first thought it was for me to not come up with the same as 2015. Start thinking about how am I going to be able to um, bring something new as my thought is was for to um, not be the same as twenty twenty as twenty fifteen because in twenty fifteen we were kind of select some songs original songs from the traditional who have been um, already used at the temple um, blah 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 so um, I was like we cannot be a band like a group and for us to not be able to do our own original songs it still could be a type of traditional but we can't we we have to bring something and not just copyright what people have been already used so i start thinking it was hard during that time is because it was in an, an, an a time where people really not get along because of the government situation things the the politic um, um democrat and and republican where people fighting each other, hate, it's a, it's a thing that people think that was 
really appropriate for someone to do to each other, to hate each other. And then I was thinking about, whoa, man, um, with that situation, I really need to for pe- to do something that people can hear my voice and see what's above us as a danger. So some of the songs like, Papa Simbi, Kiji Simbi Makaya Puyo, so the, this song is a song like something is above about to fall on us if we don't really pray. Then I was thinking about to bring the, the Congo song, which is the love. So instead of to, to preach the hate, we got to bring uh, a songs of love, the words of love, and throw away the hate and bring in the love. And then I start, it was a challenge because I didn't have enough time because I had like a, um, a, a full-time job, but it was like a driving job. And I had to, whenever something come up to me, I have to have to be on my phone while I'm driving. Um, the, the wheel used as, as the, uh, the, the drum for me, then to get the tempo of it and to get the words and record myself in the audio and save it. So and then each time I got something, I put it together until that I figured out that I can use it for this particular rhythm, then I come up with a something my own and and wrote down some song and put put down for the for this record. How did this musical Different. journey begin for you guys? How did you all get together and begin this uh, you know musical journey together? Jess and I we met two thousand nine. It was sent to me from was that the two thousand nine Jess? Yeah, it was. Yeah, that's that's what I remember. So Jess yeah. was sent to me from another another student of mine. So Chess wants to study the drum, the traditional drum from, from Haiti. And I was the one that yeah, it was referred to. And we start our friendship from there. So when I, w- I met him in New York, and yeah, we start a couple lessons and stuff. When I was about to leave New York, refer him to one of my other students. And um, it's a good friend of mine. Then he kept the lesson um, training with um, one of my other friends in New York, then since that, we became like a family. Then he has the idea with a bring up a band, um, but I might probably going to let him talk about how he come up with the band, but the we are, for instance, 20 or 29 is because he wants to study some traditional drums, rhythms from, from Haiti, and I was the one that started Probably not started with him, but that was the one that he was we figured. Yeah, so yeah, basically I was um yeah, trying to study and Danielle was was introduced, like he said, to me for that. Yeah, the the person um I should add the person Danielle when Danielle had to go back to California and I wanted to keep studying, he referred me to Marcus, who um you know, a friend of his from way back who lived in New York and you know, because Danielle was living in California at the time. So I Continue with Marcus Schwartz, and I had I had heard about Marcus for a long time, but I actually had never met him. So he took me on as a student as well, and then um, from there I'd I'd go, you know, I go to California a lot for gigs, and also my that's where I'm from, so I used to have family out there, and every time I'd go, I'd look up Danielle, and we'd have I'd study some more, and uh, you know, play dance classes with him and things like that. I sort of I had a invitation from the BIM House in Amsterdam, you know, that venue, they gave me a budget to do something new. And I was on tour with Tim Byrne around that time. And Matt Mitchell, the piano player, is in that group. And and I just started, he had been listening to some just recordings I had of ceremonies and, you know, like Wawa, Azor Records, things like that. Mm-hmm. And and he, he liked the music, you know, he just liked that drum music a lot. And I'd kind of always be explaining how little things work in it, you know, like what the drummer is calling and how they bring it in the drums under the songs and things like that. So, so Matt was already interested in a way, and I also knew he he can play a lot of things at the same time if I wanted to write complex parts. And I know he's his ear is really incredible. He can hear all this different stuff. So, you know, like oral oral cues and things like that. So I thought he seemed to be almost like designed. Um, for the music, so that's how, you know. Then I so I thought of those four four people: Matt, Danielle, Marcus, and myself to to do a first gig, which is you know ended up being that that 2015 record that comes with it. Um, you know, the quartet version of the band. So that that's basically how it, that was the the idea behind it. And I, I you know I just kind of 
they in you know in the in the like the broadest strokes i wanted i was spending so much time studying and playing the haitian music and then i'd go on tour at, you know other places and and it felt disconnected and i uh I felt disconnected from it because I'm, you know, touring in Europe and I'm not around the scene that is in New York, at least the Haitian scene. So then I wanted to sort of bring those, all those worlds together as, you know, cause we're all improvisers basically. So that, that was the idea behind the band originally. So why does it work so well? Why, why does the, why, why do the, the, the band members and the language and the music work and, and come together so well? I, I think, I have some ideas. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, well, I think a lot of the stuff in the, the, a lot of the elements of the voodoo drumming, there's a lot of overlap with that and, you know, jazz music and creative music, first of all. And then, you know, including, including elements between the songs, the singing and the drums and, the, you know, the, the, also the Haitian music called La La, which is, you know, there's, it's just a very rich, tonal language and rhythmic language like you know the sound the sounds go um the sounds that come out of haiti go they're very compelling to a you know like a jazz musician and improviser and there's a lot to work with and yet they're also connected to you know basic like six eight music and four four music in in the states so that's part of it like everyone you know when when miguel zinon joined and nick dunstan joined they were interest. They were, in, you know, very interested right off the bat in the music. I feel like what Danielle brought with the songs, you know, the the sound of the songs and and how they fit in with the compositions, which which took some work. We had to juggle where they were going to go and things like that. But you know, I I feel like in you know in interviews so far, Danielle has talked about bring you know digging and bringing um you know bringing the spirit of the music of the songs and um of his culture. To, to the group and I, I feel like makes that's what people are responding to in my opinion or that's what I'm seeing people respond to and I was hoping Danielle could talk a little bit about that just about the feeling behind the songs and things like that first of all when I was um, thinking about all these songs there's some spiritual names part of the part of the songs that I really want to give back to them as I was raised by the spirit, especially the Dumbala that I have story with, the Dumbala when I was a little boy and I was sleeping and there were a Dumbala twin was under my bed that I didn't know, which was really um, like babies, but um, it's for some reason they were under my bed when I try to go away to try to be scared. My dad was a priest. He said, no, do not, and do not hate them. So I felt like it's kind of like a protector for me. And um, they were just show me that they, they're with me. Well, so when I was inspired to, to um, write the song, I want to acknowledge the, the spirits who raised me and give back to them. And I believe it's because of my heart was into um, to give back to the spirits and acknowledge them. And they always around on me whenever I touch a drum or whenever I open my mouth to sing for them. They want to support my work and they want for this time is because of my thought was to come up with something different that people may not know if I could, but I believe it's because of the love of the spirit and their power is part of this is that because that people really embrace um, the album because I didn't know if it was going really going to turn out like that for me to be interviewed all the time, like two times, three times a week. But I give all this to God and the spirit who inspired me, was there with me when I was thinking about to acknowledge them and give that back to them. And as well, we are a team who used to probably work together in a while. So we all put our love and heart into this to to for the album to, to, to turn out that good. Gentlemen, hey, thank you for opening up about this project. Uh, good luck, respectively, where you're at in the world. Hopefully things do start opening up and, and, and getting better. And I guess that's my final question to you is we do kind of wade back into this level of ambiguity as to what's going to happen. It seemed like, as you had mentioned, Chaz, before, about three weeks ago, it seemed a little bit like things were going to, 
head down a path that was going to be so good and so advantageous for artists that have been sitting hit so hard by this pandemic. But my question is, let's go back to that three weeks ago and just dream on the idea of what is it going to be like? What do you hope everyone realizes about this long absence from live music when we do get back to that environment and earnest, both musician and the audience? Well, I, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to go on tour again in um, a little bit in June and quite extensively in Europe in July. I mean, I, I definitely... I mean, I always appreciated getting to play, but, uh, um, you know, like, I just felt like it was really the connection with the audience. Everything I've done since the pandemic has been very strong. And um, same with going, if I get a chance to go hear some live music, it's just, it's like a feeling that can't be replaced. And I think people always knew that. Um, I guess I'm, and I always appreciated playing, but now I'm, uh, I'm aware of that back and forth energy like more than I used to be so it's important to people and you know it's important to me and you know I'm always focused on the music but it it really is about that that sharing but the thing is it's hard they, after um we we come up with a work like that and for for us to be on that pandemic things and for the album is not really gonna be everywhere and have a lot of people come up and enjoy the what's in what's in the album and stuff like that. And I believe maybe things are not going to stay like this, and we will really um, not regret all the work. Uh, even if people not showed up for a show because of the pandemic, I will never regret what I've done because, especially if you get um, called every time to be interviewed, is because people who have interviewed you. Um, I've been listened to the to the work and it's 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 been accepted. So we're just looking forward to see where, when the pandemics will go away and how long the the work will be still go on stage for people to enjoy and for us to still be able to answer questions and come up with ideas and then to to be to to get the success of how the audience will react once they, they hear the live music. And I believe the live is going to sound way better than the way we sound in the recording. <laughs> I will, well, yeah, I, I know here in Kansas City, we've been fortunate. We were, my wife and I are big fans. We got out and saw some music and it was revelatory to see it again live. And I, I could feel the energy from everybody. So, um, I mean, it's great yeah. you're in Aus Austria too and you're at a festival, that, that reassures me. Um, so... Gentlemen, thank you. Good yeah. luck with this project. Good luck with everything as the future marches on. And I appreciate you taking time to talk to me here at the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for calling. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview. We give you a bit of insight into the finest cats in Virginia, Kansas City, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to both Chez and Daniel for their time and story. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com and for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.